Hi Stampers, this is Kim with Great Inspirations. Thank you for joining me today as we take a look at a new bundle from Stamping Up called Bag of Bones. And these are three cards I created using that bundle. Here is the stamp set, which is included in the bundle, as well as the dies. And there are a lot of dies. There are 31 dies. And here are the rest of them. And there are 23 of the stamps. So let me get my little charts out that I like to make. Here are the stamps stamped out. And as you can see, we have this one skeleton right here, and it's just one stamp. But then we have other bones that can go together to make um, another skeleton. Of course, we have the little skeleton of a dog and a cat. There are bats, a rose, a bow tie a heart and this one stamp has a hat a mustache and a scarf or an ascot and there's another hat then there, of course there are sentiments bone drawer eat shriek and be scary no bones about it you're a sweet friend happy halloween and boo to you and then for the dies now i apologize i kind of jumbled this all up a little bit, but I think it'll still work and you'll get the idea. There are dies, of course, that cut out all of the images. And then there are dies that cut out additional image images, such as the moon with the stars, a cane with another bow tie, a pair of shoes, a pair of boots, and then there are bones, some other hats, grass, fencing, and a tombstone, and another tombstone, or you can use that for a mausoleum or whatever you care to create um, for your cards. Now, this stamp, or I'm sorry, this die cuts out all these little teeny tiny bones. And then there's just one die. Anything that's circled, that's one die cuts those out. So the pair of shoes, the boots, the cane and the tie, and then the hat and the scarf. And then, of course, the little bats. These bats, one die cuts them out. And then there are dies that cut out, or that can be used to mat this bat. And I thought there was another, oh, this bat. As you can see, there are a lot of stamps and a lot of dies. And I'm one of those people that when there are a lot of little bits and pieces, it just kind of overwhelms me. And I made myself a promise that I just wouldn't get any more of the stamp sets and die sets that have a lot of little pieces. But I saw this and it was just so stinking cute, I had to buy it. And it's, it's not bad. Um, and I had fun creating with it. But just a word of warning, if you're like me and are a person that all these little tiny bits and pieces bothers you, you might um, just contemplate a little bit before you purchase it. But other than that, I did have a whole lot of fun with it. And I will show you some of the things I learned while I was creating my cards. We'll start with this card. We have three of our little skeletons and they were stamped using the stamp right here. And then, you know, I did a little masking for the background and I cut out some graves and then I went to Pinterest and just um, searched uh, DIY gravestones. 
or DIY Halloween gravestones. And I got some ideas for names to put on the stones just for some fun. And then I put this grass, I made it gray because of course this should be at night. So you wouldn't really see the green of the grass. But um, when I was die cutting it, I learned something because let me get the die. Here's the die that cuts the grass. And as you can see, this is five inches long. Oh, excuse me, that's my um, sister-in-law texting me. I forgot to turn my phone off, I apologize. But what I found is when you are cutting this, I think this is backwards. <laughs> When you're cutting this, here we go. Nope, I had it right. When you pick up your die and move it, this end and this end more or less match. And you can just keep laying it on. This is not correct, I don't know. Maybe I start in the middle with this one. But you can lay your die down and keep going and then you won't even see where one part of your die cut began and the other ends. So I was really happy about that. And then, I think that's about all I learned on, on this card other than I decided to just attach the skeletons with a dimensional at their heads or here in their torso so that their hands and legs could be a little bit free just to give the card a little more dimension and then on the inside I just stamped the happy Halloween and then this guy here I use the different skeleton parts to make him this one and this one and this one I believe so that was kind of fun I enjoyed stamping him And then this card, I do enjoy making square cards. And I thought that was just, you know, did a little more masking, used the Happy Halloween, and this fence with the cat. And the way I attached the cat, I just had my piece of fence right here. And then I had my cat. And I have a black cat, of course, but I'm going to use this um, crumb cake cat and show you how I attach my cat. All I did was slipping between the bars and then I put on the back of his head a dimensional and that's how that cat's on there. So yeah, just like that. It was super simple. And then I did not put any adhesive on these little pickets so that way I could kind of pull them out kind of give a jaggedy more of a little spooky Halloween look and then on the inside I think all I did was eat shriek could be scary and I put another little silhouette of the cat down there and this card I got this uh, it's a fun fold and I got the fun fold um, idea and um, instructions from another demonstrator named Lisa Curcio and on my corresponding blog post I will have a link to her video and to her um, tutorial for this card it's called a swinging gatefold card because it opens up like this and then you have a little stopper here and then the card can sit up but your focal image here it can swing back and forth and that's all because of this little mechanism right here on the back and it's just a strip of cardstock that's scored at a certain point and adhered to your panel here into the back of the focal panel and then you do it on both sides and this gatefold card, it's not 
like you think of a gatefold that opens from both sides. It's not necessarily that. But all you do is you score down the middle of your card front and then do a mountain fold, just like the mountain fold for when you um, fold your cardstock in half to form your card. And then you just make some something for a little stopper and put it up on dimensionals. And there you have it. Now you may have noticed the skeleton is put together with brads. And I was out of my Stampin' Up! brads, so I had to use some that I have no idea where I got. And it was um, fairly easy to put him together because when you die cut, these dies, all the little pieces, they have little, if you can see, these little places right here that cut little holes in the pieces. Now I have used a black marker to highlight them so you could see them more easily. But here they are, I don't know if you can see those. But anyway, that is helpful when you are putting your brad through that, you know, through the piece so you can add the arms and legs. But what I did find, I found I needed to make the hole just a little bigger. And I don't know if it was because of the brads I was using. And like I said, I, I'm out of the Stampin' Up! brads. They will be here Thursday, but um, unfortunately, that's not today. And so what I had to do was I took my piercing tool that's on the take your pick tool and a piercing mat and I just open the hole up just a tiny bit more and that allowed me to get the brad through there very easily and I did the same you know on the legs and the arms and we have the little guy and he his little limbs move As to his. So if you wanted to add a little movement, a little interaction to your card, you could certainly do that with the brads. But you don't have to because also these little dots, that gives you a really good place to adhere the limbs to the skeleton a good place to put the adhesive. Now, these itty bitty stars right here, they were die cut with this die. And they were itty bitty, and I had to use my take your pick tool on the putty end to pick them up. I put a little dab of glue on the card, picked up my star, and put it where I wanted it. And that's what I was talking about. The little itty bitty pieces sometimes are a little frustrating for me. But I will say this made it a whole lot easier. And I do use it a lot. So this, in case you were wondering, is from the Them Bones Designer Series paper. It's a sheet where you can cut off their different little... Um, designs all on one sheet that you can just cut apart and use for your cards for backgrounds or focal panels and I will show you here in the catalog on page 48 and 49 here's the bundle but here is uh, our products or cards and samples made with the products from the entire suite and that suite does include this paper right here, this designer series paper. And it has all kinds of fun images. And this little piece right here that you can just barely see is the piece that you can cut apart. And I have it right here. As you can see, here's a 
Nice spooky background and the boo. There's the cat with the creep it real. Here's the trick or treat. And this is really neat. It looks like a little a light on a stage. And the card that they created with that, the sample card is right there. I thought that was really cute and I might have to make one like that myself. And then there are just some other kind of nice fall and Halloween type backgrounds. So that is that paper, or at least that sheet of the designer series paper. And of course this suite also includes the um, glow in the dark. We have glow in the dark paper and the glow in the dark ghost and bats that are adhesive back. And right now these are out of stock, but there will be more soon. The dies should be in stock um, September 11th, which is tomorrow, Monday, or shortly thereafter, perhaps the 12th. So if you're interested in those, you might want to hop on the um, website there for the online store and make your purchase or to have a look. But anyway, here are the cards again. And I did, ha I was very surprised that I had so much fun creating these cards because, as I said, I'm, I just get a little um, frustrated with so many bits and pieces. But I did have fun creating with it, and it's a great Halloween set. And I, I just had fun. So, I don't know. There's, there may be more I could tell you about it, but I think those are probably the main things I learned while using this bundle. Now, on my corresponding blog post, there are supply lists, there are cutting measurements, and there are also some instructions on how I made each of these. Again, you will also find the link to Lisa's, um, Curcio's version of this card. And you'll find some more pictures and just um, some other information. So I want to thank you for joining me today. And until next time, stamp happy.